Hey everybody, it's Aaron from the Reviewing Network Live, and uh, yesterday I talked about the situation going on with Coyote vs. Acme, how earlier in the week Warner Brothers essentially shelved the film, despite the fact it was getting a lot of good word of mouth, and basically we're going to write it off as a $30 million tax write-off, and I naturally got peeved off, like anybody else would in this situation, and um, I wake up this, I, it, this actually started last night, this is... Uh, late last night, there were some rumblings going around so, uh, Twitter that uh, this website, Puck News, put out the story that Warner Brothers was going to let them try to sell Coyote vs. Acme to other to other outlets, other studios, and there wasn't really a confirmation of this as of as of last night. But then I wake up this morning to Deadline Hollywood has this story on here saying that Warner Brothers is setting up screenings for streamers of Axe Looney Tunes film Coyote vs. Acme, Amazon a Prime candidate. So. I think we won, I guess. I think the word of mouth finally got to everybody, that, at, especially David Zaslav, that there is pe there are people clearly that want to see this movie. But uh, let me give you the whole story here. This is on Deadline Hollywood. Screeners are being set up this week for streamers Amazon Prime, Apple, and Netflix to check out and potentially acquire Warner Brothers' Axe, Looney Tunes movie, Coyote vs. Acme, after the studio phone ran over the hook, off the hook the entire weekend from angry filmmakers and talent reps over their third film killed after Batgirl and Scoob Haunt at Holiday Haunt. The most egregious Hollywood sin here was with Coyote vs. Acme is that it's a finished film that was intended for a theatrical release while the other two movies were still in the works. Of those kicking the tires, even though no deals have been drafted, I hear Amazon is a leading contender, given the fact that Courtney Valentine, Valentine the head of the film streaming and theatrical for Amazon Studios and MGM, was a big champion and linchpin for the movie when she was at the Warner Brothers as president in production and development. All this boils down to Jen Salk's sign-off, I understand. During the pandemic, Amazon Prime acquired Sony's fa family titles, Hotel Transylvania 4 and Cinderella, among other movies. Amazon has been known to take finished films off the table for $100 million and turn them into events for the streamer. When the actor strike just ended and everyone's streamers and the theatrical schedule need a product, it seemed foolish to have a studio like Warner's leave a branded asset like Coyote vs. Acme lying around and take a $30 million tax write off the $70 million production. With Amazon now in the theatrical game, it will be interesting to see if Warner Bros. actually allows the streamer to theatrically release Coyote vs. Acme since the Burbank, California lot is too cheap to do, the same, to do so given their financial dire stats. Amazon is also a great launching pad for Coyote vs. Acme as the studio has three upcoming films with its star John Cena. Also during a very noisy weekend on social media with Coyote vs. Acme and Gravity Oscar-winning composer Stephen Price calling Warner Brothers bizarre anti-art studio financial shenanigans I will never understand. Some have told me that the killing of Coyote vs. Acme didn't come from David Zaslav himself, that the blame should be set at the feel of Warner Brothers motion picture bosses Michael DeLuca, Pam Abbey, and Warner Brothers new animation head Bill DeMosk, who are being made the scapegoats. The motives here were to protect the Looney Tunes IP and also scrub the studio of product developed by the previous administration. The only thing wrong with that narrative is that DeLuca and Abby have never fi had a reputation during their careers of killing previous administration's films or finished movies, not until Warner landing at Warner Brothers. Uh, this is written by the writer of this, um, Anthony, uh, Anthony D'Alessandro. As my mother used to say, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Also, we understand that DeLuca and Abby hadn't seen the finished film of Coyote vs. Acme. Furthermore, it's not a motion picture executive's job to care about tax write-offs for the company. The director comes. The directive comes from financing and accounting. DeLuca didn't even come close the down the besieged new line of ninety million dollar Warner Warren Beatty train wreck town and country. And if there was a movie that went off the rails, it was that one. Why would mo these movie executives with, who had long-standing relationships with talent reps want to give a reputation that they could kill a movie at any given notice? Furthermore, studios take tax write-downs on completed movies all the time. Remember Paramount's $115 million write-down on animated, well, this really wasn't an animated pick, Monster Trucks, in advance of a theatrical release, $64 million worldwide gross. The new Warner Brothers Discovery Administration needs to have to come to Jesus with itself, realizing that if it's anything worse than taking a theatri feature theatrical slate day and date on Max and keeping talented filmmakers in the dark of that, it's axing finished theatrical films. Yeah, we heard that yet that the previous regime's $70 million greenlit movies are too high of a cost for a max directed streaming release. However, why wasn't it decided early on by Warner Brothers last week that a finished movie would be sold anyway to a streamer and the money gained on that versus buying it, it bearing it in a vault forever? The movie's reported high test scores indicated it's a worthy asset somewhere. So, maybe the... So, the hope is that somebody is going to buy this. I think somebody will buy it because of all the good word of mouth that was coming out of it. But, um... It's also going to be interesting to see how this pans out, mostly to see what happens if Warner Brothers looks at this, see how successful this is, and says, you know what, maybe we should try to do the same thing with Batgirl and also um, 
and also Scoop Haunted Haunt, Haunt uh, Holiday Haunt. I thought Scoop Holiday Haunt was already f pretty much finished at this point. Batgirl, I think, was getting close to being finished as well. So they're probably seeing what happens. With, they were probably going to see what happens with this. Maybe if this actually turns out well enough, then you know this is good. Is, you know this could be something that could give Warner Brothers Discovery that moment, like the is like that moment when Scrooge realizes when he visits the Ghost of Christmas Future and realizes that his life is going down the toilet, or when the Grinch has that realization that maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store, maybe Christmas means something more. Maybe this is the moment that David Zaslav realizes that that this is the, that he needs to change the way he he does things. And even though he's not supposedly he's not all behind this thing, like his name is still very much at the forefront here, but um uh, the story goes on here. What does this move by Warner Brothers Discovery say to DC bosses Peter Safran and James Gunn? Gunn is a producer and co-subscribe on Coyote vs. Acme. And says, the Looney Tunes isn't Harry Potter and it's not the Marvels. Personally, I think it's better than both of them. The brand has been turned upside down, reinvented, and reset several times during the course of its history at Warner Brothers. Certainly a family movie that grosses $160 million to $200 million worldwide wouldn't do damage to the studio, but play directly to the audience it's supposed to play to. The problem with Warner Brothers and Looney Tunes over the last couple of years is that Warner Brothers just doesn't feel like the Looney Tunes are a necessity. It's kind of like with Universal and Woody Woodpecker. You, Woody Woodpecker used to be the main mascot for Universal until the Minions came around, and what they did with Woody Woodpecker in the last decade is just turn him to one of the most obnoxious characters ever and make him even more annoying than the minions are which Woody Woodpecker was never like that Woody Woodpecker is a great character uh, someday on the on the actual show I'll actually cover the great things about Woody Woodpecker because he really is one of my fa he's really up there with one of my favorite characters of all time like favorite cartoon characters by Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny but the Looney Tunes the Looney Tunes are synonymous with history they will always be there will always be a fan base for the Looney Tunes no matter where you go so this decision to get rid of this movie made even less sense but I am glad to see that cooler heads are prevailing somebody is looking at the ne negative backlash and saying we better do something about this so the hope is that somebody is going to go pick this up I really do think that somebody will pick it up Amazon Prime probably would be the perfect place for it. Uh, Netflix, too. Mostly I wouldn't like Apple TV Plus because I don't have Apple TV Plus. Hell, go to Hulu but um, if you need to. But um, if it goes to Amazon Plus, I'll be really, Amazon, I'll be really excited for that because I have Amazon and I don't have to worry about getting a new thing for it. Plus, they already have some Warner Brothers titles coming up on there. We got the Batman uh, Cape Crusader series and Merry Little Batman coming up in the next couple of months. So I think Amazon will be the perfect place for it. But... Um, I uh, just wanted to do an update story from yesterday's show um, saying that there is some movement going around and we could finally be getting to – and somebody at Warner Brothers is finally – maybe finally saying maybe we should take this out to other places and we could be seeing Coyote versus Acme in the next couple of years. And if that happens, that would be pretty cool. I would love to see that. But – um that's just a little update here. If you want to see the episode where I talk about this, uh, click the link below. If you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.